Hello, welcome to the Friday, November 15th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Well, with me skipping Thursday, I have two diaries to talk about. The first one is one of Brad's famous Malver walkthroughs. This one is the latest incarnation of Lockybot, something that he has found this week. And in this example, well, uh, the bot arrives as an email actually better said an email attachment sort of claims to be a document because it starts with docs underscore in its file name it's actually a raw archive so a compressed file if you uncompress it it uncompresses directly into an executable but it does use the pdf icon to make it more likely that the user will actually click and open it now, over time, Lockybot really sort of has become a jack of all trades. It's uh, still predominantly sort of being advertised as an information stealer and a keylogger, but it can also install additional files on the system. Like, I think it was a month or two ago, I talked about it uh, hiding some of the information in image files, and then, for example, extracting additional executables out of these image files in order to bypass some anti-malware tools. As usual, Pratt provides uh, PCAPs and samples and links uh, to reports from sandboxes so you can easily replicate his analysis. And the second diary we have is from Manuel. Uh, Manuel looked at Seek. Now, Seek, I think, is still a little bit an underappreciated tool, in particular when it comes to network forensics. And Manuel shows some neat little tricks how to, for example, get the top talkers using Seek's things like number of connections and such. Uh, really not all that hard to do this in Seek. And what I find is that Seek is doing these things actually pretty quickly. So if you're interested in this, uh, take a look at his diary. And remember earlier this week when I talked about Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, I mentioned advisory that Microsoft included regarding a vulnerability in the trusted platform module or short TPM. Well, uh, we now have some additional details regarding uh, this vulnerability from the individuals who actually discovered it. And uh, this is actually a collaboration of three researchers from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, University of Lübeck, and University of California, San Diego. Uh, but what it really comes down to is that for this effective cipher, ECDSA, the elliptic curve uh, DSA, there is a timing problem that allows you to retrieve the secret from the chip. And what I think makes this sort of worse than I initially thought is that this can be done remotely against IPsec servers. The problem here is that an attacker can essentially send malformed messages to the server, and then based on the time it takes for a response to come back, the attacker may be able to retrieve that secret. Now, Intel's FTPM 2.0 and the ST33 TPM from ST microelectronics are affected. There's a huge list of motherboards that use these implementations. So very likely that you have some of them in your environment. Now, of course, that still doesn't mean necessarily that you are vulnerable. The attack vector that's described in the paper really only works against IPsec servers. It also, of course, requires that your IPsec implementation takes advantage of a TPM and that it uses the elliptic curve in DSA cipher. So quite a few dependencies here. I still wouldn't call this a patch now type vulnerability, but you definitely should start investigating, trying to figure out which systems in your environment need this TPM patch applied. And yes, Intel sort of buried a little bit the security advisory, which is why it didn't really sort of bubble to the surface until Microsoft did release its patch Tuesday. 
And then we got a new version of the zombie load attack. Now, uh, this particular attack was first discovered early this year by a team at the Technical University of Graz. And well, uh, this team now found a new version of this attack that they originally reported to Intel back in April. And now they released uh, details about this vulnerability. The dangerous part about this new attack is that it does bypass some of the mitigation techniques that were put into place in software or even in hardware when the first version of this attack was discovered. The fundamental problem with zombie load is that some registries in a CPU may still contain prior data. So just like with many of these CPU attacks, it kind of violates uh, the separation of different processes that are using your CPU. So an attacker that's able to execute some code on the CPU may be able to read data from other processes using the same CPU. Seems there is a never ending supply of these types of attacks. And of course the big possible victim here are cloud environments where you do have processes run by different uh, virtual machine owners or such or in different classification zones using the same hardware. Doesn't look like there is really sort of a great way to keep these processes apart without sacrificing a lot of the performance that you gain by actually sharing and optimizing how some of these resources are being shared. So watch out for additional updates from Intel regarding this. There should already have been some updates released, but some of this may need to wait for an actual hardware fix, which means a new generation of CPUs. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.